Hey, hey, it's Edna Keep here. Welcome to the Seven Figure Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host. I hope you enjoy this episode. Everyone, this is Edna Keep with Seven Figure Real Estate, and today I have with me Eloy, all the way from Central Florida. So, Eloy, did I say that right? You did say that right. Okay, um, invest in mobile home parks. So, I've always had a special interest in that. Have not bought, almost bought a, a mobile home park right in the next um, grid road over from our acreage. I uh, was like. 79 units, I think, but just couldn't make it work because of some issues with uh, with the uh, lagoon system in the water. So I, I have right. lots of questions for you. So you welcome uh, to the show. Thank you, Anna. Thank you for having me. I'm, it's a pleasure to be here. So what, what got you very first interested in mobile homes? Well, like most syndication, uh, syndication teams, we started down the road of uh, multifamily. I had, you know, I had uh, single family homes uh, that I had acquired or uh, in previous years through a combination of just straight up uh, purchase and then lease options. And I had done, you know, a sub two here and there. So I had acquired single family homes, but it just seemed like I wasn't, I wasn't reaching where I wanted to be, you know, through the single family home process. So I decided that uh, my partner and I, who, who, who I had met, um, we had been friends for a few years, um, and we were going to team up and, and pursue uh, apartments, right? Because that's, uh, out here in Denver, I live in Denver, but our, the properties that we purchase are, are in Central Florida. Oh. But I, yeah, so out here in, in Denver, I was going to a lot of the local meetups, and there they would talk about uh, you know apartments and how um, you you build a team, and then each person on that team wears a different hat, right? You you got your acquisition hat, and you have your asset management hat, and your capital raiser hat, and I, I thought about that and it's like, man, that, that makes a lot of sense. And the idea being is that together as a team, a like-minded team, you can go bigger and accomplish your goals quicker. And that, that appealed to me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. And uh, so, so from the multifamily start, what switched over to mobile home parks? Well, fr- frankly, we couldn't find anything uh, apartment wise that that made sense. The numbers that simply Our didn't make sport, sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah, at least at least here in in Denver, we, everything is just so overpriced that just nothing made sense. So we started to expand out to different markets. We were looking at uh, Colorado Springs and Pueblo, and then we worked our way down to to uh, Phoenix, and and nothing. We couldn't find anything that made sense. And then out of the blue. My partner says, "Hey, I think I got. I think I got something." I'm like, "Okay, what do you got?" Because I found a trailer park, and I'm like, uh, "No." <laughs> <laughs> that was that was my first reaction to this whole thing. Is uh, I'm not interested. I, you know, how did we go from looking for an apartment complex to to finding a mobile home park, right? Yeah. And then he showed me like, "No, oh, look at these numbers. Uh, you know, these numbers are awesome. We're not going to find anything like this comparable, you know, and if we find an apartment. And, you know, I looked at that and it it made a lot of sense. So I basically told him, hey, let me let me bury myself in, in as much education as I can over the next week uh-huh. uh, regarding mobile home parks. And so I I, down, I downloaded every every audio book that I can get my hands on. I listen to every podcast that I can <laughs> that I can listen to. You know, this was three years ago. Yeah. It's not it, there wasn't the number of, of podcasts there are today. Oh, but there was a few, but there was a few. Uh, and basically, after a year, uh, sorry, a week of you know immersing myself in mobile home parks, I thought not only is this the right asset class for us, you know, getting started looking for our first first deal. But it seemed like, given the the uh, uncertain nature of, of where the economy is going over the next several years, this seems like the asset class to be invested in. And as it turns out, uh, as we learned over COVID in the past year, it turned out to be the right asset class for us. So, are the mobile home parks you buy are most of them uh, owner owner occupied uh, mobile units on the land, and and do you just get land rent, or do you all, do you also own the mobile homes? It depends. On some parks, um, the, the the tenants own the homes, right? Ultimately, the goal uh, for the most part, in most cases, not in every case, but in most cases, we want to own the land and take care of the land and take care of any uh, stick-built homes that are on the property. And 
and then sell off any of the park owned uh, homes that are or mobile homes that are on the park, sell them to, either to the tenants, give them first right, or sell them out to the general public. Mm-hmm. Um, that this the 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 advantage of doing that is this this puts the burden of the maintenance and the upkeep of the mobile home back on on the tenant, right? And mm-hmm. it just it makes for a cleaner business plan. Now that's like I said, that's not always the case. We just purchased a park in Port Orange, uh, Florida, and, and it made more sense after running the numbers to renovate the mobile homes and keep them and rent them out. Um, okay. Okay. Right. So, so how, it, it how, just depends. How do you make out for financing on those? Because um, I know with us when we were looking at financing, in the long run, it was more about uh, the waterworks and all that kind of stuff. But what are what percentage financing are you able to get on the mobile home parks? Uh, seven, 70, 30, uh, 30. Yeah. Okay. So we have to come up with 30% down and then this is where it gets tricky because the, some of the, some of the lenders and you have lending is an issue, right? Uh, continues to be so, but so you have to find, you have to find lenders that like to lend on mobile homes. What you'll find is that you say, if you simply go down to your local bank, they're so used to doing single family homes and some of them will do multifamily. But some, very few of them even want to touch mobile homes it's just because they, they don't understand them. They don't them. understand, they that, don't understand that was, them. Yeah. Right. So oftentimes we end up working with uh, local banks, local banks in, in Florida, right, that, that are in the vicinity of, of the parks. And, and in Florida, it's, frankly, it's, it's a little easier because there's so many parks, mm-hmm. right, that a lot of, lo, a, lot of lo, a lot of the local banks, um, they understand the product. So that's been our case. Um, and then, you know, we acquire our parks through bridge lending, right? So the bridge lenders have to understand the, the mobile home parks. Um, and then one of our parks, our most recent park, we acquired through seller financing, right? So I was just going to ask that. Right, right. Yeah. Seller financing. So um, yeah. would, the seller would understand that it's not that easy to get financing because they probably went through it, right? So what, what kind of terms do you get on the vendor financing or what have you been able to negotiate? Well, what this last one we negotiated, uh, she initially wanted a five-year um, uh, uh, contract where we would pay her. We, she didn't want us to refi at all during this term, right? She, she was after the cash flow. She understood the process, right? So yeah. uh, and at the beginning, we were like, eh, okay. Because we, we ultimately, what we want to do is we wanted to be able to renovate the park uh, you know, and then be able to refinance out in, in you know, a, a year, two years, mm-hmm. and then be able to get our, our investors, their, their capital back. Mm-hmm. And if we go five years and we, we can't do that, right. We have to wait the whole five years and some of our investors want their money back a lot sooner. So it's one of those things you got to play with. Right. And after a while, she, she, she said, okay, fine. Uh, we'll just do the five years and I'll give you guys the right to refive if you guys turn the park around. So that's, that's kind of we, what we negotiated. And, she gave us a great interest rate at five percent for the okay. for the five year term. So, yeah, who knows what, what who knows where interest rates will be, uh, in, you know, in two or three years. But who knows? Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. we we thought it was a great rate, and like, yeah, let's do it. Exactly. So yeah. you you kind of mentioned earlier that you've been on the LP side and you've been on the GP side. Mm-hmm. What 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 got you started in the LP side, which is the limited partner side? Yeah. Well. When we started going down the road of looking for apartments, um, I knew I was going to be doing more of the investor relations and capital raising on on in our deals. Mm-hmm. So I figured, well, let's. I need to understand the process myself, right? What kind of if I if I invest with you know this GP and that GP and this deal and that deal, how do they operate, right? In terms of the day to day, in terms of what kind of uh, um, uh, newsletters and and, and information that's disseminated out to the investors, what does that look like, right? So I figured, well, let me let me invest some of my money in some of these deals and let's just see what other people are doing, right? Because I hadn't experienced that. Uh, experienced that. So I figured it'd be a, a good opportunity for me to learn what to do and what not to do as a result, right? And one of the things that I've learned, and I'm glad I did that, for, by the way, because yeah. one of the things that I've learned is that um, investors, it's one thing if you give them bad news, right? Like we had a, we, had, we, we things didn't go as planned this quarter. If you tell them you're up front and you're up front about these things, they, they don't, they don't seem to mind. But if you, if you keep them in the dark, if you don't say anything, right, there's no news, 
that's when they get upset. So it's little things like that that are very valuable. To well, learn. and you really understand that when you're sitting on the LP side, right? Like I, I've always teach my students too. like, you know, if you're a joint venture partner ahead of time, because we do ours a little bit different, you're a joint venture partner ahead of time, you know what to expect. And you know the feeling on this side of the table when you got money in the deal, what yes. you want to hear. And and yeah, you can't be scared to give bad news because if it's always good news, nobody's going to believe you anyway. Because exactly. <laughs> that's just right. the way life goes, right? Yes. But, um, yeah, staying in touch with people is is a big thing. Regular reporting, uh, the ups and downs and stuff. And and you realize that when people report to you, it's like, yeah, yeah, no, I that's need right. to know that, need to know that, need to understand that. that and I, I do really think that's how we started. We started on the joint venture side where we were the partners uh, just just learning and going. And, you know, we found that that was one of the biggest things that fast tracked us to being able to then go to the GP side. Did you find that? Yep. Too? 100%. I mean, you you learn from every, everything. This is real estate, right? Deals, some things don't always go as planned. Things take a little longer. Construction delays, that delay, overspending. Uh, it seems like this is, if, 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 every, if every deal went perfect, you'd start to question it, right? What, what what are they not telling me right yeah uh, but i find that uh uh just being on the lp side learning from what other people are doing you know then i can i can take the the good things and implement them into our business to make sure that we are keeping our investors informed and that's the most important thing yeah yeah it really is yeah. so um what's my next question here how do you how do you find most of your investors through, through podcasts like this, through meetups, uh, you know, up until uh, COVID last year, I was going to, I would meet people at, at the meetups. Uh, and now, now the big thing is Zoom sessions. Uh, LinkedIn is another uh, lead source for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're, we're slowly growing our database. Do you do special things on LinkedIn to attract investors or do you just kind of free for all reach out? No, so I, I I did a program through a, a gentleman named Yakov Smart. Where I, where I reach, did too, or I yeah. didn't, but my uh, my assistant did. We're just starting to implement that. That's as soon as you said that that name. <laughs> so you must have given no. that message. No, okay. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I did that. I'm glad I did that because I'm my. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm an IT guy by trade, right? And I've been yeah. stuck in a I've been stuck in a cubicle for the last 25 years, so trying to. <laughs> trying to move from that where I interact with very few people to what I'm doing now where I'm expected to, I'm ex my team members expect me to interact with people and to draw people into our, to our, um, to our investments. Right. I have to get out there. Right. And I have to be able to talk to people. Um, however, that doesn't mean that I want to be, for example, Facebook famous, you know, I call it Facebook famous. I don't want to be the guy constantly blasting everybody's Facebook. I'd rather take a more uh, passive approach and LinkedIn helps with that, right? Where I can, I can reach out to the people that, that Phil might be able to help me without blasting the entire world. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> right. And um, so do, do you use that program called WeConnect that he talks about in there? I do. It's, okay. I'm fairly new to it. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically, it, it automates the messages, right? So I can send out to 100 people. But everything's already predefined. And, and, and the messages are sent out. So it's not me doing the actual talking right they just respond to predefined messages yeah. which is yeah it makes such a difference you know we yeah. really got to protect our time right uh Correct. and then th those are the reasons i i sign up for stuff like that too yeah. so do you, do you guys ever have any issues with um like do, do they have standalone with the park standalone lagoons standalone water systems how, how does that work in florida yeah, so like uh, in, in in most situations, uh, I mean, in a perfect situation, we would pursue the parks that are that have the public utilities, right? Uh, but that's not always the case, and and that shouldn't be a, a deal stopper, right? Yeah. Um, for me, the lagoons, I'd rather stay away from those. Um, but I haven't we we haven't acquired a park with the lagoon. But at the beginning, I, you know, when I when I was looking at some of these parks and and, and realized that they had septic systems and water wells i'm like really I'm like we, we really want to do that my partner didn't have a problem with that because he would he had been doing new builds out in, in teller county where he would you know buy these plots of land and build these beautiful cabins on them so part of that process was to you know septic systems and water wells so he was like if you understand these systems they're not a big deal you just have to know what they are right if, if you have no experience with them yeah they can be intimidating but yeah. there's they're not a big deal yeah. and as long as you're maintaining them uh that's it, right? So, 
Uh, ideally, yes, public and uh, um, public utilities would be awesome across the board, but that's not always the case. Some parks will have you know uh, public water and, and public uh, uh, electricity, but they'll have uh, you know they'll have a septic septic system, right? So as long as you're maintaining it. Yeah, you know, you should be okay with that. As long as you understand that. You're, yeah, you're well, and that that was, see, that was one thing we were comfortable with too, because we built on an acreage. So we got this mound and a septic system. So yeah, you, you're, yeah. you were familiar and comfortable yeah. with that, but people who've yeah. never heard of it is like, oh, that's so scary. Can't yeah, even yeah. Like, that's kind of what we got from the lenders. It was like, really? There's like a private, da, da, da. It didn't uh, even make any sense to them. Right. Yeah, yeah, this is why this is why working, you know, trying to develop, uh, you know, build rapport and work with lenders that understand the product is important. Because yeah. most of them, most of most of them that have never touched a mobile home park, that's the reaction you'll get when you tell them about septic systems and water wells. Like, yeah. no, nope, I mean, not it, interested. <laughs> yeah, we have a cottage. Same thing. I mean, that's yeah. that's just part of life at the lake and stuff like that. So yeah, people just got to get used to it. Exactly. Um, when when so when when you're looking for investors, do you have a specific type of investor that you're looking for to invest with you? Well, at the beginning, I was looking for IT guys because that's you know you start because I I felt I would build uh, um, they would understand me. I could build yeah. rapport with with yeah. the guy who's who's been you know doing IT work for twenty plus years. Now he's looking to diversify his investments. Yeah. Uh, so that was our our main focus. But you know I have you know I I've developed. Uh, um, a, a small network out here with my my dentist right and he he invested in one of our deals and yeah. he loved what we did so he he put me on to some of his friend, dentist friends so now i'm looking at well maybe i should look at them as a source of you know additional leads and how do i get a you know how do i focus my attention on you know dentists this is again this is where linkedin you can yes, with that's the search you can features really target, you can kind of right? you right? can target those specifically the people that you're looking for so, yep. so if I had a student that was interested in learning the GPLP structure, they could potentially invest with you and learn as they went along sort of thing. Would you be willing to teach them? Absolutely. That's, awesome. yeah, that's how I, that's how I learned. And that's it's when I, when I, when I find, learn. yeah. Yeah. It's a when great I, business model. I know not everybody will do it because they're, I find that some people are very, not abundant thinking. I always no. think like, this is just a start. Like who knows? Like our, our very first training class. And I also reiterate this to the students. We took a three-day weekend. We did our training with the Robert Kiyosaki group. Oh, okay. Three-day weekend. We met our, our very, our two business partners, <clears throat> one at the event uh, and one through another couple that was at the event. We went on to do lots of stuff with them. And very quickly, because they had, the first one had started a couple of years before us. So they knew stuff that we didn't know. Right. And yeah. that it's just such a fast, great way to learn and, yeah. and to, for, to try to do it and learn it on your own takes a long time. It does. Yeah. Right. For sure. Yeah. Okay. So how do people connect with you? Well, the easiest way is uh, if you go here. Oh, I see that. <laughs> partner with Apex.com. Partner with, okay. partner with Apex.com. Drop your email there and uh, you'll get my, my Calendly pop up and we can discuss how we can potentially partner together on some on some deals. Sure. And the free book is about investing in mobile home parks? Yeah, it's it's the top three reasons to invest in, in mobile home parks. Ooh, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. well, I think I'm going to text that one in myself too. Well, All right. you know what? It was really good talking to you. Is there anything else that you'd like to kind of pass on to the to the audience? You know, I, I have this discussion with a lot of people that are, you know, that not necessarily looking for mobile home parks, but in real estate in general. Uh, you know, I'm sure you've seen this yourself, too, that, you know, people come in uh, and, and they'll spend a lot of money on a training. Right. And then they don't do anything. And instead, they spend our money on the next set of training. And mm -hmm. we seem to be caught up in the cycle of spending money on training, but they don't do anything. Right. Well, I would I would say that there's so many niches within real estate that you, you got to pick one. It start by picking one and going all in. Yeah. And if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, then maybe pivot to something else, but you, you, you gotta, you, you can't just keep spending money and training. You gotta, you gotta do the work and you gotta you get know, out there. That, that's exactly what I tell them. <laughs> you, know, yeah. I tell them you can study till the cows come home, but it's not till you buy a deal yes. that you're really going to know that you know what you know. You yes. know, because other than that, it's all just knowledge and no, unapplied knowledge is, yeah. That's and, exactly. And, yeah, I see people doing that all the time. Or they think, 
this sounds easier than what I was working on. So I'm going to do this. And then they realize it's no easier. You still no. got the same learning curve. So yeah, pick a pick a niche and then go for it, right? Yeah, go for it, exactly. Yeah. That's that's really, really good, uh, yeah. good advice. Because same advice I give. I love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. No, it's it's true. It's so true. I see so many people go down that rabbit hole and spend money and years and never really get anywhere because they don't yeah. actually commit to making it happen. Exactly. It's like That's a exactly dream right. that never, never uh, launches, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Exactly right. Awesome. And and if people, so so if people can follow you on your, um, through your website, and then mm-hmm. is there a way to follow you if they're safe, they're not quite ready to commit to working with you, but would like to kind of hear what, what's going on. Is there a link for them to sign up maybe through the free ebook or how does that work? Yeah. Either one through the, uh, through the texting the four, seven, four, seven to the, to, to, uh, to texting or by joining the mailing list, uh, by going to partner with apex.com. The other thing that happens there is you're, you're automatically joined to my mailing list and you'll, you'll get a, a weekly video of me talking about something regarding mobile home parks. So it's a way to stay in front of people, right? Cause most people aren't, going to be ready they don't know who we are Initially, and it's yeah, tile. Yeah. but after a while after a few months I'm like hey these guys seem to know what they're doing and they're making acquisitions and they're making things happen so it might be is something there a minimum might... investment to invest with you Eloy? usually usually it's uh thirty thousand dollars yeah okay Okay. Well, that's good to know too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Well, you know what? It was such a pleasure to uh, chit chat with you and kind of get to know what you're working on. And I love that. Florida. It's such a beautiful area. My newest assistant is living in Florida. And so I have a special interest in, uh, we want to get her going, make, make stuff happen. She joined the program here in January. Excellent. And- what part of Florida is she from? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's central. <laughs> Actually, I think it is central. I can't okay. I can't remember the name of the town. I should write it down. Um, okay. cuz she's mentioned a few different places cuz she's uh she's worked in one area and then lived in another. So, right. I'll double check, but uh you'll be a good contact for her because she's she's yep. that she's going to get something this year. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, well, thanks again and uh I'll send you off this recording in as soon as we get it rendered. Thank you, Edna. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. It's my sincere intention that you got value from this episode. If you're interested in learning more about building your passive income through real estate, either by investing with us as a joint venture partner or as a student discovering how you can attract investors to your deals and build your own seven-figure real estate portfolio by helping others build their passive income, check out my website, ednakeep.com, or watch my free masterclass at ednakeep.com slash 90 days to 5k.